Welcome to the Press for Conversation podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Layback Corey. I got a special gang in here today. These dudes is hot. They fire. A couple of members not here today, but shout out to them too. I got the P Dot Gang. I got my main man Chas. What up, though? I got my main man Sinatra. What up, though? And they got their great ass manager, man. My man B Scar. What's up, y'all? Appreciate it. All right. Minor correction is Dot Gang. Minor correction, Dot Gang. I don't know why I keep saying Dot Gang. See, I, I told you, man. All right, before we get in here, we're going to play this great song, okay? It's the head single. It's called Caprice. Cutlass, Monies, and Regals, right? Facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. It's kind of feel like the summertime. Let me let y'all know a little history about Sinatra. It's UNF. Back in 05, I was in the Monty York Cutlass. Brown Gucci bucket, stunting out in public. When the club let out, all the bitches fucking. My old school make the hoes choose no discussion. Battle rap legend, stacking up the extras. Tied with the mob, you know that I'm connected. 24 inches, you know the Chevy stepping. G -g Gold rope necklace, west side repping. Wood grain whipping hoes, notice I was different. About to get a cut, I'm on the north end with it. Cartier lenses with my black chinchilla. UNF nigga with my dot gang killers, what's up? Made in my era, my hood, we suck together Shout a made nigga, gators and coogee sweaters Sex and pelly leathers and the money that's put together King Kong in the trunk, peanut butter, that's all leather Popped a couple bottles with Mo, my folks strapped Tell Ray, 4th Street, count it up, hit run it back Cuz called a murder, my nigga not coming back No, no release dates on nines like Warren Sapp Yeah, roll up, I'm smoking Blunt, pour a deuce off in my cup She can't even sit inside my cutty If she ain't trying to cut She shit, what's up? If we talking money, we can't talk enough He talking tough Till he turn black boy and they chalk him on the black bottom Before it was Sig Dollar, it was Dollar Shot him Couldn't afford all them fancy cars Shit, not Dollar Guy Yeah, I'm big cuz Please don't cross that line because we sticked up Bitch, what? Them sixes on that Chevy got me sitting up Bitch, I'm outside Scandy Blue Inside Similac, we stick So what's going on, Doc Game? What up, though? So what y'all been on? What made y'all come up with this record? Uh, pretty much, man. Just paying the ode to Detroit car culture. Um, we all got different experiences and memories of what those cars represented at a certain time and period in Detroit. And um, on my end, just as a creative director, if you will, just wanted them to paint that picture of what their life was at that time. So I pretty much, you know, shot them the concept and let them paint. So how did you, how did you, so Natural, I know you wasn't here last time when I interviewed you. How did you meet Scar? Uh, I knew B. Scar for some years, you know what I'm saying, through a black government situation we had back in the day. We was all a part of the same movement. Mm -hmm. So uh, we always been kind of in and out of touch. We lost touch for a minute, and then we kind of uh, got back in touch. Uh, we had a show, a Bodie James show last year. That's kind of when we linked back up or whatnot. And ever since then, we just been grinding together. So how are things going with you, Mr. 3269? What's going on with you, man? I'm blessed, man. You know what I'm saying? Happy to be here once again. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I know talk like to me. Talk to me. A lot me. of artists don't get like a, a second chance back, like back to back. You know what I'm saying? So I'm blessed to be here, man. I can't complain at all. Just working. You so, know what I'm saying? You know? Man, you guys got to tell me about this Cleveland trip, man. You got to tell me about this NBA uh, weekend, weekend Cleveland trip, man. It was wild. wild. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? A lot of work. A lot of uh, a lot of chilly winds. You know what I'm saying? A lot of food. Um, yeah. A lot of networking. We did, um, what, three shows? Three, two shows? Yeah, about three shows. Yeah, everything we did, like, three shows. We did a whole media day where it was, like, Every name of any type of media company was in inside of one room. Shout out to uh, Hef, you know what I'm saying, for putting that on. Um, uh, we One of the shows that we did, we opened up for Benzino, you know what I'm saying, and that just came off of us doing another show that was there. That wasn't even on the itinerary at first. So that was, you know what I'm saying, that was a blessing. And um, we enjoyed ourselves, you know. We had a little... Uh, 
what you gonna call it? Uh, uh, I would say a bump in the road, but it was more like a stuck. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful fun about them, moments. He them hills in Cleveland. You got them fun moments, though. You know what I'm saying? What happened? Y'all fell or some shit? We got stuck on nah, the hill. It was like a little hill. Full it was an ice. Ice, icy, yeah. icy hill. We was making our way to uh, one of the stops we had to do, and the GPS took us, you know, you know, GPS get weird sometimes when you're on the road, and the road and the path, it had us, it had us going uphill. No, we was going downhill. I'm sorry. We was going downhill, and it was a backup. A car is going down, cars going up, police was there, tow trucks, it was wild. Steep hill yeah. too. Right like at the you end of the know, hill was the freeway. Like when you really look at the hill, you could tell like if you from that neighborhood, everybody know don't go down that hill. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? It was <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. Was, but we we bonded good. closer though. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to P Dot. You feel me? We bonded so, closer. So man, I mean, I, I do see a bond with you guys, and um, I wish her and Dollar was here, but yeah. the gang still goes strong with them. They still here Always. in the flesh. Uh, spirit. But, uh, tell us about this fuck a mic, fuck a demo tape, man. <laughs> what, what made y'all come up with that, B? Um, it was pretty much, you know, everything we do is an ode to the independent grind. So if you just go back to the very beginning, when it was just me and Dot moving every album or project title song title within the project it all has a um, overarching tie of independence and what it means to be independent so fuck a demo you know for those who've been around and been a fan or a student of the culture back in the day that's how you got on you had to submit a demo tape and now in the age that we in now there's no rules to quote unquote getting on so the fuck apart is like we writing our own rules, but at the same time paying old to what it took in the, back in the day, but it's all under the concept of independence mm. and just championing the independent grind. So what 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 does it take to be a, a great manager in music? Uh, well, thank you for the, you know, however the compliment is, is, is flowing from you. Um, I don't necessarily consider myself great at this time, I just feel like I do what I got to do, but I you know, definitely appreciate the roses. Mm -hmm. um, I just think consistency, man, and just willingness to do the work. Um, on the last platform we was on, um, shout out Ann Hickey of uh, Podcast Convo, shout out Podcasting, shout out Groove Radio Detroit, L Book. Uh, the conversation was around the divide between artists and managers, mm -hmm. and specifically what takes place here in our Detroit underground music scene. And I kind of spoke from my own perspective of a double-edged sword that artists need managers, managers need artists, but the unfortunate truth is that people don't know how to communicate and be direct here. And sometimes you can be direct and be nasty. Sometimes you can be direct and not have tact, but it's a fine line of being able to be direct, but being understanding and being considerate on both ends so that the communication kind of flows in a fluid manner because everybody light bulb and their brain goes off different ways. So some people learn by repetition. Some people you can tell them one thing one time, they got it locked in. And then some people, they have to see it. So it's like a combination of figuring out what works best in each situation because every artist has different needs, different personalities. It's like being in a relationship you know, or raising children. You got to treat everybody to their respective differences and pros and cons and so just being an active listener spending you know some level of personal time with the artist away from what you do as business because sometimes when you build that comfort level it makes the work a little easier um and it takes time it ain't it ain't something you can rush i don't suggest that anybody try to get in this position of being a manager and not willing to you know at least give it a six month or better time period because it takes time to kind of develop those comfort levels. I mean, they can speak to it, you know, from their perspective, but that's just my perspective. So, um, by you guys working together or whatever, how how has the relationship got better with you guys? Not Sinatra's in there. How has the relationship with you guys far? Y'all feel like it's a it's a brotherhood bond, or it's just you know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's deeper than rap. For real, you know what I'm saying? It's deeper family. than music, like. Air, like that's how it all started. Like everybody in their own ind individual ways got a personal connection before the music. You know what I'm saying? And we all have just that common 
common um, thing by all knowing B and having and having established ourselves beforehand. So yeah. How long did it take y'all guys to write the song, the original sin? I think we was. I mean, as we far as the writing, had, I think the writing was all four of us together. I think we finished all the recording within like two hours. Okay, so how do you? But the process, yeah, the mm -hmm. process fifteen was, hours. <laughs> <laughs> we was in the studio for fifteen hours. But I think all the recording was done like in two. Yeah, they got the concept you know, like a month in advance, so it wasn't like all a hundred percent on the spot, but most of it was like executed on the spot. So how how many hours do you guys spend in the studio? Like fourteen to sixteen. God each dog. Each session. <laughs> who who y'all been working? Who you who did y'all work with for this project? Uh, we recorded with ASAR Isolation Records. Shout out to him. Yeah, Stars are like our main Sorry. engineer. Um, in the past, we worked with Maestro. Sh shout out Maestro, Silent Riot, uh, DJ DDT, DJ Johnny Storm, Tona Producer out of Mix Factory One Studios. Uh, shout out Nick Speed. Um, we we didn't work with some of everybody, a little bit of everybody. Mm. This is a song I like by you, Sinatra. It's called "Bless the Drip." I appreciate it. How how long did it take you to write that record? Not long, not long. Probably like a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably a day. Um, actually, with a hook, um, my producer he's actually on the hook. His name is Will Grinding. Shout out to Will Grinding. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually wrote the hook. I, me and him formulated the hook in the studio while recording the record. My verses was already wrote, but we made the hook in the studio. Yeah. So. In, individually, how do you handle how do you handle with dealing with writer's block? Drugs, weed. <laughs> I mean, that's my answer. You For know real. what I'm saying? Drugs. Yeah, and uh, I just on top of turning up the beat on my monitors because I got a little studio set up at the crib. Mm -hmm. so I turn up the beat on my monitors and just zone out. Sometimes I close my eyes. Okay, so do you uh, now you got a studio? Do y'all do y'all guys ever go to each other's houses and record, or y'all got that that main spot, or y'all just when y'all recording together, y'all meet up with Scar? How y'all how y'all how they do it, Scar? I mean, it's a combination of both. Um, I generally we had like a meeting, you know, whenever we kind of like going in like catalog mode, I call it, because we don't necessarily start out with like a project in mind. We just start out with making just music. And it'll kind of turn into a project over time after we get so many records in. Um, but it'll generally come out of a meeting we had. So, like, wherever we are in our overall plan, marketing and um, business-wise, we ju we generally, since we all been working together through the pandemic every three to six months, getting, getting like, a creative zone. Mm -hmm. And when we get in that creative zone, we had, like, a business meeting, you know, shoot some ideas on the table. And then maybe within two weeks to a month from that time, I'll schedule a session with one of our main studios that we record at. Like I said, uh, generally, Asar uh, Isolation is our primary engineer and place of recording. And then um, we just lock in. And the reason why we like to do lock-ins is just so that we don't have to rush. Mm -hmm. So we take our time when we in there and do as much as we can to maximize the record. You know, so that when we leave out, we live out, leave out with as close to a finished product as possible. And even even if that 14, 15 hours may result in only one or two records getting done, we know that that record, if we had to, you know, release it or if we had to do something with it, is more done than not. So we really take our time with what we, what we do music-wise. That's what's up. I read an article that you learned how to write music, Charles, from your older your brother, correct? Yeah, yeah, my brother shout out to uh, Mr. Hood Life. At after he taught you the ropes and everything, what was the first song you ever wrote? After he taught me the ropes, mm -hmm. um, it was a, a song that me and my best friend recorded called "We Striking." We striking. Yeah, yeah we striking. That's you know cool, what I'm man. <laughs> One time I uh, I seen you in the video. Uh, I, I don't want to say it wrong, but I was like you was dealing with Crown Royal or something like that. Yeah, Crown Royal Diary. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So how, what made you come up with that record? That's your favorite drink, or Crown Royal Diary? Um, I'm a uh, I'm a dark sipper. You know what I'm saying? I'm a dark sipper. I wouldn't say that it's my favorite, but it's definitely like in my top three choices when I'm at the bar. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, it basically started off. I was uh at B Crib. 
And, uh, you know what I'm saying, he had invited me over and he just played a bunch of beats. And, you know what I'm saying, when he played that beat, you know what I'm saying, he already had it. He had the beat, you know what I'm saying, uh, labeled Crown Royal, Crown Royal uh, Diaries. Mm. So I kind of like just ran with, with seeing that, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, he gave me a couple of little ideas to talk about, but he, but specifically he wanted me to tap into like past, um, past experiences dealing with women, you know what I'm saying, in my life. Like that was like per se, like however way I wanted to put it, you know, he left that up to me and my creativity, but specifically he wanted me to tap into like things that I wasn't able to get off my chest if I had anything else to say dealing with past experiences with women. So what gets you in the mood of writing songs, Sinatra? What gets you in the mood? Uh, like I said, uh, weed. <laughs> but no, nah, uh, I just beats sometimes, like hearing the beats and the instruments and zoning out. Uh, before rap, I was I was a big writer, you know what I'm saying? I like to write stuff, like poetry and stuff like that, and stories in school. And, so I'm, I was big on writing. So B, what's ne what's next, man? What's next for for the gang, man? What's next? What what um what you got going on next? If you don't mind, you know, spending a little beans. You know, some people are like, nah, no, we can't. No, no, no. That's, we still uh, promoting the fucking demo. I mean, it's technically still brand new. We dropped it Valentine's Day, aka Valentine's Day massacres, considering where we sitting at right now in the history of this building. But dropped it on Valentine's Day, so technically. It just turned two months old, uh, give or take, um, a month, month ago. It'll be three months this weekend. So we're still a little newborn. And um, we haven't, due to some unforeseen circumstances behind the scenes here and there, we haven't fully been able to be as consistent with the promo the way we want to. So as the summer is coming on, we're still trying to push and promote the project. But as far as like big, big, big splashes, it's gonna be um, more solo work to come from each member. So some more solo videos, some more solo singles, may, maybe, may or may not be solo projects over the course of the summer and they're going into the fall, but definitely more visuals, more music. But um, Fuck A Demo was kind of like a platform to bring Sinatra in, um, help kind of level up what we was doing with Dollar carrying over from Temperature Check last year. And then um, for P-Dot and Chaz, it was more so just another solid entry into their respective individual catalogs and their dual catalog as P-Dot and Chaz. But I think it's time for everybody to spread their wings and do their solo thing. And I really enjoy you guys for coming in. And I got to ask you this question. When you when guys want features from your artists, um, do, you get, do, you, do your phone ring a lot now? It's now that you guys are getting out there and start... Yes, around the kitchen for features? Yes and no. Um, they tend to handle most of their uh, feature work individually, unless it's something that requires a, a extra level of business negotiation or dealing. Um, my management style is more of a partnership, so we all are equal partners in what we're doing, and I try to embody everybody to be their own brand more so than the artist. So each artist is signed to their own brand, and then their brand along with my brand our partners in distributing the content that they put out as a collective individually together. Um, so that's pretty much the business model on how we move. But it depends on the situation, you know what I'm saying? Because they all have their own relationships with different people from different walks of life down through the years. And then obviously they are all benefiting from the relationships that I have access to directly. Um, but I try to give them the freedom to do that type of stuff on their own and kind of, you know, tap in when necessary. I believe in the whole concept of eating what you kill. So whatever I hunt for, whatever come across my desk, everybody have equal access to, but for the things that may come to them individually, unless they uh, deem it as such as something they want to share with the rest of the collective or something they feel like they need my help or assistance with, I tend to let them run them plays on their own. So speaking of that, who would you guys like to work with in the future? Any producer, any artists? Who would you love to work with in the future? Uh, I always keep an open mind to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, it's so many. There's so many artists and producers, but I definitely just, uh, we definitely just checked off one, you know what I'm saying, on my list. Shout out to Kid, the producer. We just was in the studio with him not too long ago. So, like, after I, you know what I'm saying, being put up on, 
you know what I'm saying, his game and his legacy. I'm uh, I was definitely honored to do that session. Mm. Got that in the can right now. Yeah. Kind of spilling the beans a little bit early because I was gonna kick it with him after we left here. I possibly burn one by the water, hopefully. Um, but I done reached out to Heli. I done reached out to uh the Olympics, because I got relationships with them from back in the day, and I'm trying to get some of these bucket list records out the way while we got the, the fire burning, and um, I'm going to eventually make my way over to Apollo Brown, a couple other people, but them just some names at the top of my list that I'm going to try to get them all in with sooner rather than later. I'm glad that you was able to share that with me on my platform. That's that's I appreciate that because you know most people when they when they saying something like that they usually keep it under the rug <laughs> until it actually come out. You know what I'm saying? So well, the difference with me, like if I say it, is 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 going to manifest more more than not because these are actually real relationships. Like these ain't people that I just met at one point in time. Like no matter how much time passes in between us connecting, like kind of like what happened with Kid. Me and Kid kind of lost contact down through the years, mm -hmm. and because we was there doing some other business. We realized it was his facility and his space, and we wound up reconnecting. And literally in less than a week, we was back in there to do a record. So, you know, for me, I generally tell them and most people, I've been around outside a long time. So it ain't too many people in the city from, you know, the, the Eminem camp all the way down to new people that I do not know or don't know in some capacity. So if they're not one phone call away, they had most two phones calls away from me being able to get access to them. And in a lot of cases, it's just about having the bag. So as long as you're willing to spend that bread, you can pretty much work with whoever you want to in the city. Mm. Okay. So the people out there that's watching this great episode of the podcast, where can they find Chaz? Um, you can, uh, you know what I'm saying, check out check out me on Instagram, 3269 Chaz, C-H-I-S-E. I'm also on Facebook. Uh, Mason D Boy Chaz, and then you can check out my official website for everything um, D Boy Sound dot com, all lowercase. Once again, the official website is D Boy Sound dot com, all lowercase. You can find me on Instagram Sinatra seven forty seven S N A T R A seven four seven, or you can follow me on Facebook under Brandon Fly. That's Fly with an E, and you can follow my brand Squad Goals Collection. Squad underscore goals underscore collection. Uh, B Scarb, aka Real Name No Gimmicks. You can follow me at Grind Life. That's G R I N D, Grind Life, L I F E, one word, 313 on Instagram and Twitter. And then my government on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Brandon Scarber, ASR Consulting for the YouTube and website, www.westillrise.org. Uh, shout out Sig underscore dollar um, for Sig dollar, a.k.a. dollar side of symbol, uh, at PDOT Music for um, Instagram and Twitter, most social media platforms for PDOT, and her site is www.game.net. Uh, fuck, fuck a Demo is available everywhere on all streaming platforms, as well as the back catalog for Sinatra, Millionaire Self-Esteem EP with the lead single, Bless the Drip as well as Club Shirley's for Chives, um, with Crown Royals, Heart So Heavy, and a host of other singles that we released from that project as well. The Coney Island Trio, get that deluxe box on either one of their websites, Coney Island 1, 2, and 3. Um, Cody High Class Act, um, Detroit Bad Girl, Problem Child 1 and 2, also available on Dot's website, and a host of other content, you know, on all their playlists and YouTube outlets, so. Tap in, man. We got tons of material out there. That's what's up, man. I really appreciate that, man. I got to ask you one more question because I forgot to ask you. Actually, I got to ask you another question as well. Before we break loose, I got to ask you this question. How was it battle rapping in school? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, in school is when I first started learning, so I wasn't good in high school until that summer. That summer, I locked myself in my room and listening to Cassidy, the locks, just studying how to how to write verses, studying punchlines, and I just got out in the street. It was just anybody that wanted to rap, anybody that was rapping, I wanted to rap against them. You know what I'm saying? And I started meeting people, building relationships. Yeah. So I gotta ask you a question about the ASIR consultant. 
Okay. The, I'm saying it right. Yep. Okay. I just want to make sure. Can you like, hey man? <laughs> oh no, you good. So um, what's next for that whole pro- whole whole la- is that a, is that a label? Because I know you got Varsity Group too. Is that like a label or just a group? Yep, I got you. So ASR Consulting is pretty much the management and marketing side of things because it's a you know separation of uh, services and powers that be because you're not supposed to have certain things tied in just for business things. So. ASIR is the consultant and marketing. So usually through that, I manage, I consult, provide services, do my events and promotions, my podcast, Four Corners, lives under there. So a lot of my just overall service, if you will, is um, under ASIR. Well, Varsity Music Group is technically a traditional um, independent label. Um, I kind of just brought the brand back because this current run that we're on, for me, I didn't know uh, how and when, why, where I would do music just prior to the pandemic because of what I was going through personally. And so um, when I decided to bring the brand back, it was like me paying homage and dedication to how I started because that was my first foray into music with a group of friends and artists that um, we founded the company with 10 years ago. Um, But Varsity Music Group has its own in-house publishing wing, Varsity Street Publishing. And um, tons of different artists who have released projects and been affiliated. But I would say, to date, the biggest uh, parishioners and flagships of that brand has been P. Dot, Chaz, and a young artist by the name of Vizu Loki, aka Now Loki the Vibe. You know, those three artists, as far as the VMG legacy, have added to it, carried it on respectfully, and would definitely go down as the the, the bench, the strong bench of. The legacy of Washington music. At first, I had to look back. I thought you said the other word at first. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I know he didn't say the bitch. I'm like, <laughs> I had to go check. The, but no, I'm just kidding. I heard you. But I think I like, what I was thinking was they the benchmarks of success. That's oh, that's that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Of, um, but man, I really appreciate you coming back, man. And I really, I really appreciate you guys coming back, man. Appreciate All you guys, for having man. us, man. You man, know y'all saying? hilarious. I know last that's time shit. I had to, I had to pull stuff out of Charles, man. He right. want to say nothing, man. Uh, I had to pull stuff. Man, I don't know what I was sipping that day. All right, it was all good. But y'all had done freestyling for us afterwards. That was fun. That was yeah, fun. y'all had done freestyling yeah. for us, man. So, like I said, man, I appreciate you guys coming back, man, and um. Hope to see some great endeavorments over there pretty soon, man. Like I said, this is the Press of Conversation podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Layback Corey. Thank the Doc Ann for coming through. And make sure y'all check out all their music on pl- all their great. The, f- the fuck the demo mixtape is out on every platform. Temperature check, Coney Island, all those good endeavorments, man. Great song. Like I said, we just listened to earlier. Caprice. What's that? Monty's. Cutlass, Cutlass and I Regals. Still don't, yeah. I still can't say it. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a, I, I mean, it's a great record, I just call y'all. It old school. <laughs> man, make sure y'all check them out, man. It's fire. They got a great manager. I, I really appreciate yeah. B, man. He a phone call the way. This yeah. man answered the phone if you stuck in rain, snow, when <laughs> not a hurricane, Thanks. but he <laughs> answered the phone. He real. Make sure y'all get with him, man. But y'all got to be really serious on y'all brand. Thank y'all. Peace. Yeah.